guys. Um, my name is Jess Hartley, and I am super excited to be running you guys through this session of Changeling the Lost this evening. For the last 20 years or so, I have been a writer, editor, and game developer in the tabletop role-playing game industry, working on projects like Changeling the Lost for the New World of Darkness. And I am really, really excited to be able to be providing this um, for folks who are mental health professionals or, or other professionals. Um, I think uh, you guys have had a little bit of experience with Dungeons and Dragons. And one of the things that I think is most important about learning a broad variety of different tabletop games, especially for therapeutic purposes, is that there's more to different games than just the setting being different or the dice rolls being different. Um, how they approach gaming or how they approach the world can drastically vary from game to game. And you're not going to find that out until you get a chance to sample some of the um, non-D&D analogs. Um, for example, one of the things that I love about Changeling the Lost is how it looks at characters. D&D, uh, &D, uh, the axis for your characters is uh, race and class. And most D&D uh, analogs run that way. And it basically breaks down to what you were born as and what you learned how to do. And unfortunately, that's kind of how our society tends to look at people and define them too, um, which is a perfectly acceptable definition, but it's not always the one that's most helpful um, in every situation. Changeling, for example, looks at your, um, your character axis as your kith and seeming, which is what happened to you and how it changed you. So the things that you went through in your durants and how they affected you. And then the other part of the access is your court. So once you were done with that durants, once you'd come through that trauma analog, how did you, how did it change how you see the world and how you're interacting with the world? Um, did it, did it fill you with fear so that that's, that's the overlying principle of your life? Or did it fill you with passion and a, and a demand to not ever have that happen again because that was not your desire? Um, I think that, that having uh, access to a broad variety of tools can be a really, really helpful thing, especially when we're looking um, at games as therapy. Um, so that's why I'm really excited to share Lost with you. Um, the session uh, we're going to be doing um, these these sessions, um, they I'm running kind of an ongoing story. Um, so your characters will all be part of this particular chapter. Um, you've done some really really cool things in a pa in the past as your motley, which a motley is a group of changelings who are working together and bound by a pledge to a certain purpose. And it can look like a lot of different things. It can look like a family. It can look like a business. It can look like a gang. It can look like basically any kind of bonding group that people come together to work in. Um, and your Motley has done some pretty amazing things. You have rescued mysterious relics. You have broken curses. Um, you have save the life of one of your companion's daughters by finding her a very, very rare goblin fruit. Um, and most recently, you earned the, a, a favor from the Summer Queen, who's currently reigning in your freehold, um, by discovering what had happened to one of her, one of her minions. And that minion had been uh, attacked by a creature that looked like a tiger, but had clockwork front paws, um, camera eyes, and a tail like a, like a cable bundle. It was a very bizarre combination of technology and uh, fey creature. Um, and you were able to determine that this is what attacked the minion of the summer court. Um, you are on your way back to receive your favors from the Summer Queen. And as you're traveling, you're walking, you've come out of the hedge, which is the supernatural labyrinth that separates the mortal world from the world of the, the Fae, Arcadia. Um, you've exited the hedge, just came out into, back into the real world. Um, and you're walking back the, um, Summer Queen's brownstone is maybe a five or 10 minute walk from where you came out of the hedge along the edge of this beautiful city park that runs through the center of town. 
Uh, and as you're walking, you notice up in the tree, uh, up above the treetops in the park, um, and not a completely unfamiliar setting. Um, there appears to be a very large predatory bird um, that is being hounded by an entire little flock of crows. Um, perhaps it's strayed too close to their nest, or maybe it just ticked them off. Um, but there is definitely a great, great big bird that is being just harassed by a, a swooping swarm of smaller birds. Um, the strange thing is, though, you think maybe that you hear yelling like get away from me coming from from up above would any of you like to do anything before we go any further yes as lou i'd actually dart forward uh take a little bit of an aggressive stance and bark out quit it <laughs> okay wonderful <laughs> uh lou turns and moves into the the city park a little bit so we can kind of get underneath where these uh, where this bird fight is happening up in the sky. Um, and he snarls out, quit it! And uh, the the bird, don't really pay any attention at the moment. The, the big bird has its talons full. Um, it is obviously having a hard time. Uh, there's like a, a feather, uh, like a black feather, um, kind of does that helicopter swirl thing that feathers do when they're falling from heights uh, and lands down kind of on the on the ground near you. Um, and uh, yeah, you you're from underneath him, you definitely hear Lou uh, that that the big bird is definitely cursing out the smaller birds. The smaller birds are just calling, but the big one is calling them all sorts of obscene names as he's trying to uh trying to fend off their attack what kind of birds are the smaller birds the smaller birds look like crows it's hard to tell they're pretty high up they're still up above the treetops but they're black medium size corvid looking birds probably crows frankie town. wants to get a look at it this is a good fight i want to see how it turns out <laughs> delightful delightful are you especially gonna... when it's a bunch of little birds that's the best showing this big bird um, are you going to move then into the park too? Yeah, I'm going to move in. The best view I can get, right Fantastic. underneath it. Fantastic, right underneath it. Yeah, it's um, it is like early morning on a Sunday morning, so there's not yeah. really anybody else in the park. Um, you guys kind of are a little bit tired because you were doing your thing, your last little quest um, throughout the night, and are uh, are coming back for your reward now so it's uh it's real early post dawn but um not too much not too much past that um so frankie you see uh an, another you know feather kind of beaten up and bent in half and that kind of thing comes falling down and then one falls that's falling wrong um instead of kind of the fluttering helicoptering that a feather will naturally do this one is plummeting um point first uh just and it drops to the ground right between you and uh you and lou Ooh, i want to pick it up Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. don't touch that what are you doing how tall is the tree smell it run of my fingers it's heavy <laughs> right does this feel like a blade it feels like the um vein of the uh of the feather uh instead of being like hollow keratin is very very thin metal uh and the that the um plumes of it have been attached into it similar to how a um a fletcher will knock an arrow um jordan uh sky your the trees are maybe uh they're about mm, you, know, you can look over and you can see they're about as tall as the third story buildings. So maybe, maybe 25, 30 feet tall. And how far up are the birds? There's maybe another 15, 20 feet. Okay. One of my contracts, I can communicate with birds. Is that something Ooh. I can attempt to shout out to them to try to break up the fight? 100%. You definitely can. Okay. So we're going to go take a look at your contracts and um which one of them are you going to use dear uh, tongues of birds and words of wolves i can communicate with birds through whispers and empathy 
fantastic. And Jess, can I assist her with that to give her a little bit of bonus? Um, so with mundane actions, you definitely can. Um, with supernatural actions, it's I also have tongues of birds and words of wolves. Oh, okay. You know what? I am definitely going to allow you to do that. You, if you are able to um, activate that successfully, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, well, hmm. I just need to give one of the animals a new name. I'll pick a little bird and call it, uh, you know, Teeny. Teeny, that's fantastic. Okay, why don't you and uh, Sky go ahead and make your rolls? You're going to roll your weird plus your animal can. If you have a specialty that's a appropriate for it that gives you an extra bonus die to your die pool and you're going to roll however many die are in your die pool and looking for an eight nine or a ten if you hit a ten tens explode you get to count that as a success and roll it again and what you can do just because sometimes our um our audio is a little difficult to catch um if you could just when i ask for how many successes you get just hold up how many you've got until i acknowledge what you've got Oh, that's uh, okay. Um, so, Sean, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something here that's not technically by the rules, but I think it's going to be fun for both of you guys. Um, if you would like, I'm going to allow you to split your successes with Jordan, I'd so that to. you guys both have uh, both have activated this skill. Would that be acceptable to you? Absolutely. Jordan, is that cool with you? Yeah, I'd like to imagine maybe I like tried to say something and like hacked up and started coughing. <laughs> And Luke at my back or something, and suddenly I can speak okay now. I love that explanation. That's fantastic. What a great way to to uh, uh, to to get lend an assist to the skill. Okay, fantastic. So, um, Jordan, are you going to uh, activate the catch as well? Or are you going to name one of the uh, animals? Yeah, I heard uh, Luke call the one teeny, so I'm going to name the big one Big Bird. Okay, fantastic. We got Teeny and Big Bird. I'll write that down so I don't forget. Fantastic. Okay, so um, you you guys can definitely hear now um, the crows, the smaller birds, are, are like, get the hell out of here. What the hell are you? You're an abomination. This is, get out of our space. Get the thing away from our nests. And the um, the big bird is uh, is just like leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. And as you're watching the um, the the crows um, do a coordinated attack, like three of them in a row, just like hit the body of the big one and literally drive it out of the sky. And it starts to dive bomb for the for the. Uh, for the the ground at first you think maybe it's just doing like an uh, evasive maneuver or something but it becomes very clear as the ground starts getting closer that this bird is not going to pull up and uh, is on a collision course I'll call out to the group someone catch the big bird the big bird we're on the big bird side mm -hmm. <laughs> all right I'm uh, turning to the to others thought they were how to deal with the crows. That's what happens when you get your butt kicked. You fall down. <laughs> I'd like to use uh, Goblin's Malignant. Okay. To, to draw all the crows onto me. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Okay, let's take a look at that. Uh, Goblin's Malignant. Redi redirect the target's wrath onto a new target. Okay, so you're going to get into a little bit of a problem here because there's like eight or nine of the crows and this only works on one particular target um would you, how would you like to handle that do you want to try it with one to start and you could just slowly but surely pick them through or uh i'll, I'll start chaos i'll target one and put it onto another of the another of the birds there you go. There you go. That's that's uh, that's going to be very interesting to watch. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so in this case, the victim of the target's wrath owes the loss a favor. None of these birds owe you a favor, so the catch isn't activated. You're going to have to go ahead and spend a point of glamour, uh, and we are going to. Uh, you're going to roll your manipulation plus your persuasion, and then just let me know how many successes you get on that. Birds are dumb. <laughs> it's 
three fantastic yeah you uh so alex looks up and he's like and one of the one of the crows just like lets out this uh lou and uh sky you hear this mother and it like changes path you know the rest of them are just kind of circling it changes path and starts attacking one of its uh one of its parliament mates and um the uh the 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 conversation turns very quickly from yeah we got him to what the heck uh as the as, as the bird starts attacking its companions um oh. it, go ahead so i was gonna say so marlo sees what alex did and gets kind of a glint of joy in his eye and um, does the same to another crow. Fantastic. Go ahead and uh, roll the manipulation plus persuasion. And that one. And the birds are still dumb. Um, <laughs> uh, and, okay, yeah, definitely. Same thing happens. In fact, one of the crows is like, what the hell? Um, it now is attacking another of its companions, and the whole flock is just kind of this swirling mass of chaos um is anybody going to try to the big bird is still falling i want to run in and try to grab him before he hits the ground fantastic mm -hmm. fantastic okay i do not intend on trying to catch big bird but i will go over to see if there's anything that can be done cool, cool. i want to cool. be right there i hope he hits the ground kind of though <laughs> so marlo is going to kind of surreptitiously check out the feather I'm not getting in the way He's puffing up his chest and trying to look tough, but he's going to kind of use his um, training as a mechanic without anyone noticing to try to suss out what the feather might be going on with that kind of mechanical looking feather. So. Fantastic. I will get right back to you. Yep, of uh, Ash, do you, do you want to go ahead and roll me? How about dexterity and athletics? Okay. To try and catch this big bird before it hits the ground. It is falling really fast too. Um, so let me know how many successes you get on that. You got two, fantastic. You move right underneath it, hold out your hands. It is a big bird. I mean, it is probably, uh, its wingspan is probably eagle sized, um, but it is, its body is, its body and head are, are definitely like crow sized. And then when you look at it, you realize that like it's got, extensions like almost like a second row of mechanical feathers or at least half mechanical feathers to extend out its wingspan by a good foot on each side um and when you turn it over its beak isn't a beak anymore it's it's this weird kind of grindy looking uh set of of cogs and gears that looks like it would just like pull and it's running even though even though there is no light in the animal's eyes and it's not moving the cogs are still running if you put your hand or something too close it looks like it would just consume them and pull it into the creature's mouth um marlo on that note uh the feather let's see are you using a contract or are you just using your... i was gonna so i was gonna say what skill would that be i don't have a contract ah um knowing touch knowing touch talk would to an do audience it? yeah you could definitely try and use that but That's now that i've known so he i marlo's standing there kind of with the feather in his hand and he hears mm -hmm. the cogs of the beak and that kind of attracts his attention sure but he'll i would examine. be calling marlo over anyways i'd take a look at that like this one doesn't need a doctor <laughs> <laughs> not a doctor <laughs> Maybe so Marlo will Marlo will take a look now. The knowing touch is um, let me see how that works. One glamour, and then what do I roll? Weird plus crafts. Yep. Uh, let me find them. Where do I find my weird plus crafts? Oh, okay. Your weird is uh directly above your contract. Oh, I see it. Yes, it's there. And then your crafts is on the front page. It's under mental skills. Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay. So three. Um, just a, a real quick while he's rolling that, just to give you guys some information about uh, change and mechanics. If you have zero in a skill, you can still make a roll involving that skill. You're just at an un unskilled penalty, untrained penalty. So for social and physical 
uh, skills that you have a zero in, you're at a negative one penalty. If for mental skills, you're at a negative three penalty because they are things that you really kind of have to learn. Some people are naturally athletic, but nobody is naturally academic, um, or at least not in terms of the skill role kind of thing. So um, Marlo, how'd you do? I got one success. It was a 10 though. Okay, fantastic. So that's going to count as a success. And then you get to roll it again to see if you get more successes. And I did did not. No. So (laughs) one success. Fantastic. Um, That's enough to activate the contract without any problem whatsoever. Um, So the uh, mechanics of that are understand details of the item's construction. Bonus equal to the loss weird to repair or modify it. So if you were trying to repair or modify this, you'd get a plus one bonus. Know how to most effectively disable or break it. Well, it's a little late for that. It is broken. Um, As you're watching, the cog slowly grinds to a halt. Uh, And it's very obvious in the the little like lenses that form this creature's eyes that there is there's no more light going on here um what you you're looking at it and it's it's very confusing it's not like anything you've ever seen before but you're able to figure out that this appears to be um a, a, when you when you look up at the crows overhead and you look at this thing it it looks like somebody took a crow and then added on to it um obviously the mouth was a, a was a a um substitution um and if you like open up its little maw you can see that it it feeds into a gullet that is very similar to a, a crow's regular gullet um so it's not it's not a entirely made thing and nor is it an entirely natural thing or an entirely fae thing this is it looks like something that somebody has added on to he will convey that kind of grudgingly to the rest of the of the group uh this this crow has been modified somehow i'll try and get uh the attention of teeny to fly down and tell us when this abomination showed up fantastic fantastic let's see uh that is lou let's see you have the tongue thing okay fantastic i'm just gonna have you being so you've already established contact with them you you can speak their language and understand them um i'm gonna have you roll um presence plus well depends on how you want to do it are you going to try and sweet talk them are you going to try and snarl them down which which social skill uh avenue are you approaching this trying to trying to get them to come down like a scared parent that just caught its child going into traffic, I'm using intimidation and right. uh, threatening why they are trying to Get attack. Get here right now, young man! Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so go ahead and uh, roll your presence plus your intimidation. Um, because you are inherently a predator and this is a prey species, I'm going to give you the specialization. So add an extra die to your die pool. And I'm going to roll for them. Oh, geez. Okay. I've been rolling and not getting any successes at all for these birds. And I just got two tens and a seven. You got four. Okay. Wonderful. And I didn't get any successes the second time. So you definitely win. Um, Yeah. The teeny like kind of swoops down. uh, It lands in a branch like not too far away from you. The branch is maybe 10 feet up or so, but within easy conversational distance. And it kind of looks at you and I motion the sky over as well, and I look at the bird and go, what are you doing attacking something five times the size of you that has made out of metal? Do you have no sense of self-preservation? I-, I thought that you would know better than this. When did this arrive? We hates it. It just showed up, and we hates it so much. Which direction did it come from? Did someone send it? It it came from, and it points over, the, the big metal tree. I'll look and uh, try to identify where it might be gesturing. Really, really easy. In the in the edge of the city park, there is one of those cell towers that looks like a fake tree, okay. um, but not really very much like a fake tree. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. That's that's got to be the big metal tree there. 
and I'll nod my head and say, you know what you need to do? You need to think about your life. That's right. You're going to end up dying if you're not careful. And then what are all your crow friends going to do? They Sky, will do you have anything to say? Yeah, I want to say I am also very mad at you because you are so mean. Uh, with that, I'm going to go well, over and mention it. to Marlo. Um, well, we hate it. No one thing has dominion of the sky, I say. But it's, <laughs> but it's wrong. It's wrong. It's broken. It's, it's, it's an abomination. It's... I walk away. <laughs> Poor Tiny. <laughs> uh, Marlo, uh, apparently the bird said that this thing came from that cell tower over there. Um, I don't know whether or not this is anything you can figure out. I don't understand what's going on with this. So Marlo will kind of hesitate, and he'll pull out his sword, and he'll say, well, well let me see if there's any threat over there. Well, and he wanders over, he'll kind of surreptitiously, surreptitiously try to examine the tower. Does it look modified at all in any way different? So he's going in kind of warrior stance. So he seems so, to be charging, but he's he's kind of surreptitiously examining the tower as he comes along. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of a long charge uh, oh. because <laughs> so he, this, he, <laughs> that's okay. he so may so, he may stop for a breather on the way and then start charging again. <laughs> Are you sure uh, he's, not, <laughs> he's not a big guy. <laughs> Um, the uh, the parks are probably about a block and a half to two blocks wide and about four blocks long. Um, and the clearing area is in the center of like one top half. And the big tree, the metal tree, uh, is at the, kind of at the, the other end. Um, there's nobody else in the park, so you can definitely charge over there um but you're definitely if if the rest of the crew wants to remain in verbal communication uh distance they're going to need to go with you or you're going to separate out the party so either way is fine with me just let me know which one but just quick, if question, I see him guys. quick question guys are we going to let don quixote go charge at that windmill all by himself or are we gonna <laughs> are we gonna go with him why is the Someone tank protected off without the healers and the dps <laughs> You know, that is a very good question. I really would like to know why the tank always does that. Just charges off after the boss, doesn't wait for the DPS or the healers to show up. It's just wrong. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Charge. <laughs> anybody okay. Bird? Does anyone have the dead bird? If they don't have it, I'm going to drag it with because we got to, you know. Anybody I'm still holding it in my hands. Bring it with. Okay. Come on. Okay, so as you approach the um, the cell tower, um, it is uh, the the base of it is about as big around as like a redwood tree. Um, you you figure if if the seven of you held hands, you'd probably ring it. But it's about the size of like a small one room building at the base, um, and then it goes up for you know it's it's taller than the regular trees in here. So it's probably maybe 30 to 40 feet tall. Um, it's a big metal cylinder uh, with, and you don't get up to the branches until it, you've got up, you know, above where the other tree heights were. But there is at the base of it, uh, a, a doorway, um, it's a door. Um, it's uh, currently closed, and uh, but and it's got all kinds of warning signs. You know, high voltage, authorized personnel only. Do not trespass on penalty of you know this penal code, uh, and that sort of thing. And the door is uh, it's got a very large um, chain and lock on it. Um, I've well, played enough games to know that this is definitely the way we need to go. Agreed. So let's bust the chain. Who can bust the chain? Trying to see, but mm, I, I'm going to cross my arms and go. I can bust the chain, but this is dangerous. Why would we do this? I'll do it. <laughs> a, a couple of the crows have followed you guys over and are are watching you curiously from the nearest treetops. Do as I say, not as I do. What's the worst that can happen? Why wouldn't we do this? I agree. I never asked that. 
This is our uh, moment of glory. Steven, you're talking, and I can see that you've unmuted yourself, but I'm still not hearing you at all. That's because I accidentally hit the mute on my headset. <laughs> fair. <laughs> totally fair. I'm sure that I was can, uh, clever. <laughs> just shim the lock if you guys want, but do you want to go into high voltage area? Yeah, I'm going to start picking this lock with this feather. Fair enough, fair enough. There's okay. got to be a secret area in there somewhere. We can find it. Ducks and larceny? Penalty for using a feather? Uh, you know what? You're you're using a feather as opposed to something else, Um, but maybe like a, a negative one die penalty to it. Not to your successes, but just to the die you're going to roll. Got it. Uh, four successes. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you definitely picked the lock, that big old master lock. You know, it's one of the stereotypical padlock kind of things. Pops right open. Is there um, a chain with it? Wrap mm -hmm. it, yeah. wrap it around my fist. Nice, nice. And you would notice that the uh, the the chain and the lock both super super rusty. As you as you unpopped them, like rust flakes are falling off, and it it looks like it hasn't been opened in quite some time. Is there anything in the tower? Go ahead. I was saying, is there anything in the tower that looks like it, it could have been a point of egress for that crow? Is there anything, an opening higher up, or nothing? There's not. It's uh, it it looks like a solid metal tube all the way to the sky, um, with metal branches off of it at the at the height um the uh the door that's changed shut is it's kind of like what i envisioned like a submarine door being you know it's metal to metal and there's no window or anything in it there doesn't appear to be any windows on the outside of the um the tree trunk uh at all and the birds are in the tree watching you i'm opening the door okay here we go guys <laughs> So, one. <laughs> so Frankie reaches, it's got a, just a, a like a um, turn, you know, a, a drop down uh, handle. Um, it just, it doesn't want to turn at first. Like it's, it, you got to, uh, to get it past that point. It's obviously, you know, been rusted in place a little bit. Um, when you push the door forward um there's just a really like stale smell inside it smells metallic um and like a little bit of oxidation like rust and and dankness and dampness and that kind of thing um but uh it's and it's a completely dark room that is the size of the um trunk piece um so it's obvious it's not like partitioned out into separate rooms on that level and there is a uh metal uh staircase that goes up in like an industrial metal open frame staircase with a railing that goes up into the the upper portions do I, um do i see any surveillance inside like cameras or anything like that no, nope, nothing sure. active. It looks like this. It, it it looks like this space has not been opened in quite some time. And then, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, if that's not an opening for a joke, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, Sky, you you hear the two ravens trying to figure out what it is that you guys are doing. They're like talking to themselves, like why. They were so mad. They were so mad. But but now they're going, why are they going to the tree? That's weird. That's where that thing came from. But they're going in the wrong way. Why are they doing that? That's weird. Why they, there's no, there's no, there's no other side of that. What happened? What is happening? Um, I'm going to call Lou over and, and kind of, I don't know if Lou heard, but I'm going to fill him in. I'm going to call up and I'm going to say, you know, we will be much kinder if you tell us the right way to go, please. Okay. I use my uh, Pathfinder contract to see if there's a path to the hedge. Okay. Uh, I'll get right to you as soon as we're done having uh, the bird talk with Sky. Uh, don't let me forget that. Um, the, the bird come, like, comes down to the point where it can kind of like 
talk at you more directly. And, and it's like, th that thing didn't open the door. It just, the door just disappeared. That, that it didn't, it didn't do that thing with the thing and the vines, the metal vines. It, and that room wasn't where it came from. It came from, mm, smelled like plants. Mm. I don't know. I don't know how it did it. Are there um, any other windows such as this tall metallic um, tower? Are there any windows that we can see from it or it's completely? No, nope. it's just, yeah, it's, it looks, it looks almost like the base of like a wind turbine or something. It's just, it's not designed for people to like look out or that kind of thing. It's, um, why don't you, uh, so Ash, you had an action you were going to do. Remind me of what that was? Uh, the Pathfinder. Pathfinder, fantastic. Let's take a look at that real quick. And then Ash, Pathfinder, locate Hollow's Trods Pass to and from Arcadia and other details of the hedge nearby. Fantastic, roll me an intelligence plus your weird. Um, And you are still on this side of the hedge, so uh, unless you want to open a gateway or something, you're not going to be able to complete the catch. Um, so you'll need to spend a point of glamour and uh, let me know how many successes you get. Four, fantastic. Okay, for each success, you can learn one pertinent fact about the local hedge within the line of sight. Now you've got a little bit of problem because you, there is no currently active gateway into the hedge right here. So you, the one that you came through when you came back is clear on the other side of the park. It's uh, on a, a, a kind of a stone gate with a metal top that's a, like a decorative arch in the center of the park. Um, that's how you went into the hedge to go track down the um, tiger beast. Uh, and that's how you came back out. But you're now in a different corner of the park. Um, so there you you do not have a current line of sight on the hedge uh, unless you would like to open a gateway of some sort. Are you familiar? Oh, you are not familiar with how to open gateways. So changelings can on any doorway, window, um, even like a, 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 a thing that reflects mirror. That's the word I was looking for. Even on like a mirror that's big enough. Anything basically that is a passageway looking thing that you could theoretically go through, a changeling can put their hand on it, spend a point of glamour, and ask slash demand to be let through. And that will open a gateway into the hedge. However, um, Generally speaking, uh, people don't tend to do this in other than emergency situations because uh, a gateway, once it's been opened, it closes, but it never becomes completely inactive again. And that means that something from either side um, could activate it again and open it. So for example, it might seem very convenient to put a gateway to the hedge in your bedroom closet. However, for the rest of your life, um, you have to worry about something opening that gateway from the from the inside and coming into your room. So does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, so at this point, you could, if you would like to, um, check around and see if there's, you could go to like the arch gateway. Um, there are also uh, ways that you can search to see if there are any active gateways. In fact, I I am willing to, because you've got four successes I and, and there are no there's no vision of the hedge in this way. I'm, I'm willing to, if you want, to uh, allow you to sense if there are any non-active but have already been opened gateways in the park that you have not seen. I would love to do that. Fantastic. That door right in front of you, that is very definitely a gateway. It just simply has not been activated at the moment. And you would also know that gateways tend to, they, they close behind you once you've passed through them. Well, guys, what do you think? How much is what people are learning sharing with us at a game? That's a really good question. How much are you gonna how, how much are you gonna share? Uh, Ash, are you going to tell them about what you've discovered? 
Yes. I will tell them everything that I discovered. Info dump here. Here you go. So back into the hedge, are we that curious about this? Uh, curious? Are you kidding? Uh, we we like to want to get caught. That we finished our job. Yes, yes. Thank you. I just want to get a mountain doing some Cheetos. <laughs> then we can go back into the hedge. Is our reward a plus nine ogre slaying knife? Yeah, what's our reward? Is it going to be like awesome or is it like the the I'm pretty sure it's Twinkies? The promised and pledged reward was a major favor for each of you. Eh. How big a Twinkie are we talking about? New York the State. size of the Empire State Building. <laughs> well, hold on. I got an idea. That's a pretty big Twinkie. You're right. We should go back. We should get our reward. And then we should tell her about this and get paid to go solve this mystery. There you go. And we should really talk about how terrible this bird was. And it's Faye, and everybody can see it, right? There's no seeming on this bird. Like, this thing's looks... Guys, I'm tired of holding this thing. It's pretty heavy. So the, the bird definitely has a seeming. Um, it's definitely, it is a, it is a, um, a crow that has had fey magic done to it. So you're guessing, well, you can't necessarily see what a human would see if they looked at it. You're guessing they're probably just going to see a crow oh, okay. because that's how, how fey magics usually work with the, the yeah, mask it, and the mane. It does have probably Because the birds are reacting to it strange, but that's different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alex, did you have something you wanted to say, dear? No, I was just uh, going to point out that that you know making a deal and to to go do something is what happens when we don't go all Leroy Jenkins. Well, Marlo's uh, going to do what Marlo's going to do. I'll go along with the deal. I will go along as long as it results in us getting some action later on. I will go along with the deal. What kind of action are you looking for? The, the the kind that involves a blade and and heroism and 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 uh, maybe a song or two written about us eventually. I hear you, Marlo. Boring and, right now. Boring. And Twinkies. Twinkies. Don't forget the Twinkies. Oh my God! If I gotta. Oh my God! This at least drinks a drink, man. Twink. The, uh, so you've opened the door. Um, the entryway there starts to kind of shimmer. I step oh, this back. Is <laughs> I grab. I try to hide uh, by the tree where the birds are and get ready to pounce if need be. Fantastic. Marlo, yeah. Marlo looms before the shimmering. I want to move off to the side of the door so when it comes out, like I'm on the side of it and get ready Fair. to smack it with this chain. Yeah. I'm ducking behind whatever is close. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got Lou and Ash hiding. We've got Marlo striking a heroic. Uh, pose in front of it. We've got Frankie off to the side, ready to ship whatever it is that comes out there before it even knows he's there. Uh, what about Gray, Alex, and Sky? What are you guys going to do? Oh, look, there's a tree line over there. <laughs> One more for the hiding group. Uh, Alex? Alex is going to stand out there kind of a little bit to the side of Marlo, but with his head just kind of in his hands. <laughs> and Sky? off behind a tree and just kind of peer off the side of it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so the shimmering like clarifies and what, all of a sudden instead of seeing into that room, what you're seeing is a uh, overgrown like almost looks like a solid wall of brambles. Um, some of the vines there are like this big around. They're just huge. You can see the thorns on them from where you're standing. Even those of you who are hiding, that's how big and overgrown the brambles and the hedges in this area. Uh, there is a tiny, tiny little track. Um, look, you would, even the smallest of you would have a hard time like sneaking through it to the side and uh, that kind of thing. And um, something is rustling in the in the brambles on the on the other side of the entryway. Would you like to take any action before it gets a chance to move? 
Nope. Okay. So d- something comes about knee high, comes dashing out. It is going super fast. Um, it appears to be about the size of an overgrown house cat. Um, it's fur where you can see it is tabby colored so it's got like gray and black markings um stripes and and uh color gradation and that kind of thing but it is making the weirdest like uh sounds like a tea kettle whistle sound um and as you're glancing at it as it's dashing by you're pretty sure that its back legs are wheels and it is heading across the park um, he- actually heading kind of towards uh, those of you who are hiding in the tree line because it doesn't want anything to do with the area right here. What would you like to do? I'm pretty quick. I'm going to pounce it. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's roll initiative just to see, it, it, assuming that any others of you are going to attempt to do anything with it. And we'll just see if it can get away or whether you're going to grab it. Um, so what we're going to do is do, 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 grab my little handy dandy uh, thing. Um, so you're going to roll uh, dexterity plus composure. Let's see the result of it. Oh, wait, no, no, no. So your dexterity plus your composure and roll one die. This is going to work a little bit differently than the way we've been doing dice mm. pools because initiative is wonky. Um, so whatever your score is in dexterity plus your score in composure, just keep those as a number and then roll one 10 sided die, add that number to the previous number and give me that number. That'll be your initiative. Well, uh, who was that? I'm sorry. I was looking. Uh, sorry, Marlo. Marlo got a 12. Yeah. 14. And who is that? Frankie? Okay. 14 for Alex. 14, Alex. 10 for Ash. 15, Ash. 10. Sky? 16. 16. Bird girl fast. Uh, Lou? (laughs) Four. Four. And Gray got an 11. Uh, Lou, uh, Sean, I think I, I, I have not successfully communicated to you the proper way to do this because you should have more than that. Uh-huh. Um, it's, uh, so it is the score of your dexterity, so a three, plus the score mm-hmm. of your composure, which is a two. So that's a five. And then I you're going to... six then. Yeah. Okay, six. Got it. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. And then uh, Gray got a what? 11. 11. Okay, fantastic. So um, let me roll for the, or for the cat. It got a five plus two and one. Two and one is six. So the cat's going to go at the same time as Lou. Um, so uh, Sky, you're going to go first. Do you want to do something? You might want to. I just want some clarification. So far- 100%. So for a contract, do you, do you, if you do the catch, does it just not cause you or cost you any glamour or do you have to do the catch in order to do it? No, no, no. The cat, the catch is just a shortcut. So it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't cost you the glamour. Exactly. Sure. Um, I have Viridian Embrace and when outdoors or around a lot of plants make nature aid you, I want to see if I can get some vines to kind of go after the tabby cat, maybe getting within the the spokes of the wheels on its back leg to either slow it down or stop it? Super, super smart uh, idea. Unfortunately, Viridian's Embrace is one of those contracts. If you look at the what it says it does versus what the successful mechanic actually is, it, does, it doesn't do what it sounds like it's going to do. Um, so it, what it will actually do is for every success you get, it'll give you plus one to your perception, your movement, or your stealth, and your speed for the scene. So it yeah. doesn't actually command uh, the, the vines to move. That's a, that's a much higher level contract. Yeah, so, so it adds possibly to movement or plus one speed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Movement. So yeah, I'll try to catch the, the cat creature. Fantastic. Okay, so go ahead and roll me weird plus expression. As you're basically calling on the plants in the area to come to your assistance. I got one success. Fantastic. Well, the 10th okay. to roll one more, correct? Yes, definitely. So still just one. 
Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now for uh, the rest of this scene, which is basically as long as we're doing this thing that we're doing here and have not moved to another area or taken on some major change in focus, um, you will get plus one to any perception rolls, any movement actions, any stealth rolls, or uh, plus one to your speed. And that is a instant action. So it acts as your action for this turn, um, but it, the effect will last much longer than this turn. Um, okay, so now we have uh, Frankie and Alex. What would you guys like to do? Uh, I'm gonna try and whip this chain and let the like lock try and wrap or grapple his grapple his wheels okay and just yeah that's what i'm gonna try and do okay um, fantastic why don't you roll me uh because you're using it kind of as like a whip yeah. uh we're gonna do dexterity and yeah. uh weaponry and i have a specialty in improvised fantastic this is about as improvised as you can get so right. just let me know how many successes you get and Let's see, I am going to do it. Ah, two. Two successes, okay, let's see. And I am going to do minus the defense plus armor. It doesn't have any armor, and do that. Okay, um, you still get one success. Yeah, you definitely, you um, you whip that uh, thing out. It doesn't actually catch in the spokes, but it, it hits the, the, the lock, hits the, the back wheel on this side and, uh, and, and flips it so that the, the cat like turns over on its side and its wheels are still going and that teapot spinning is, or uh, teapot screaming is still going on. The wheels are going like crazy, but it, it can't go anywhere because it's like literally cart over on its side. Can I move to him at the, or it at the same time? Yeah, like, definitely, definitely. Uh, and then Alex, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to kind of approach going and try and get it to calm down a little bit. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's try. Uh, let's use your. Let's see. Uh, we can use your presence and animal can. Um, that seems like a good combination for that. Uh, so that. Let's go ahead and give me that dice roll. Okay. And, because you have a zero in animal can, you're you're at negative one, so it's your presence is four. But, but because of my seeming blessing, I have no untrained penalty for social skills. Well done, well done, good sir. Fantastic, okay. So that will uh, go ahead and give you four die to roll. So let's see how many successes you get. Two successes, the, the cat, like it's still it's still on its side, um, but it definitely turns up and looks at you, and it looks like its facial expression looks like it's trying to meow plaintively, but all that's coming out when it does is this really high pitched tea whistle a uh, tea kettle whistle sound, um, and it's like it it's like well grabs its little like kneading front front claws towards you. Um, and you, you realize that its ears are, have been like removed and like tiny little like speakers have been in, implanted into its uh, head. It gives it kind of a weird uh, profile for, for a feline. Looks like it has little stubby ears. Let's see. Okay. So that is that. And yeah, it's definitely, it's like trying to, trying to like, I pet him. I want to pet him. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Go ahead and pet him. Uh, let's see. So, Marlo, I believe that you are next with a twelve. What would so, you like to do? So, how far? I'm. So, I'm still by the gate. How far is the? Did the cat get away from that open gate? Hmm, let's see. As it came through. Oh, not very far at all. Uh, maybe okay. 10, 10, 15 feet from the gate. So I, I think now that they're petting it, I probably can't kill it. So I'm going to stand uh, in front of the gate. And um, just keep an eye out if anything else comes through. Okay. Um, try to talk myself out of just charging in. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's Marlo, and then we're gonna go with Gray at an eleven. They <laughs> seem to have caught the cat, 
So we're just picking up a bunch of strange fit. I'm going to go take a look at the bird's dead. I'll go take a look at the bird. Okay. Uh, Ash, did you drop it somewhere or do you still have the bird? He's still in my hands and I'm still mad about it. (laughs) Here, I'll take him from you. Can we feed the bird to the cat? Let's not. It makes it lighter, please. So, Ash, your action is next. Um, How do you want to deal with Gray's request? I graciously give the bird over to Gray. Thank you. Thank you. It was very heavy. It definitely is. Like, uh, like you would think that a crow of that size would would be pretty light because they're birds, but it's yeah, it's it's real heavy. And then, uh, Lou, you are last. What do you want to do? I'm going to gesture towards the birds and then whisper to them saying, I need you to help me see and activating my beast's keen senses. And I'd like to look through the portal to see if I can see anything that set this cat loose. Oh, very good idea. Fantastic. Okay, let's see. Uh, beast keen senses. Fantastico. Uh So you're going to roll your wits plus your weird. Um, you cannot currently see or touch a wolf. Um, oh, but but you're attempting to do this with a bird. Mm-hmm. Um, normally, so I normally I think um, just to make sure that I'm explaining the rules right. Normally, you choose what kind of an animal you're doing, um, and and because you are a, a wolf beast, um, I pre chose wolf for you. Okay. But I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna have fun with this. Um, go ahead and touch the bird, activate your, uh, if you'd like to activate the catch, and we're going to go ahead and just let it work for birds this time. Sure, okay. Uh, and you're you're going to use um, uh, sight rather than smell. Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. So go ahead and roll me uh, Wits Plus Weird. I got two. Fantastic. So you are going to get a plus two bonus on all wit, wit rolls related to perception for the rest of the scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have you do a perception check and then we'll throw that bonus on top of there and see what you can see through. You're looking through the gateway. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, fantastic. So roll me your wits plus composure for your perception. Add two after you're done. uh, Yeah, no, add two to your dice pool and then uh, tell me how many successes you get. I have four successes. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So you don't hear like movement or see movement on the other side, um, but you can see like right up about it, you know, like a little bit above eye height, there is a little space where the branches and the, the vines just don't happen to overlap each other for a little bit. And you see what looks to be the tip of a chimney with smoke coming out of it. And it's a good distance into the, into the hedge. Um, you're the, the, you can only just see just, you know, a tiny little miniature of it at this point. Um, but there is, there is definitely something looks like a building of some sort with chimney, with chimney smoke um, through the gateway, even though there's no real clear path to it. So that, uh, that brings us to, uh, kitten meow meow um who is still uh looking at alex and doing the um if you look close its mouth has been uh, like stopped It, it still has like a cat mouth but the reason that it's not being able to like make meowing sounds or even speech is is there's a what looks like a a whistle has been like implanted blocking its mouth so every time it exhales or yells or tries to meow or that kind of thing it's just you're just getting this steam uh tea kettle sound are we going to remain in combat rounds at this point or now that the cat is on its side and not going anywhere are we okay to drop out of combat I'm okay dropping. Okay. Okay. I'm Sorry, okay Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold remains ready, however. Uh, I'm going to 
um, wave my hand desperately at Ash to get his attention to come over to me. I'm heading over. Ash, Ash, use your talk to plants. Ask them who did this. I'll use primordial voice. Delightful. Delightful. Okay, so you are going to, let's see. Primordial voice. Um, would you like to complete the catch by making some sort of an offering to the plants? And which plants are you going to attempt to be talking to? Uh, the, I guess I mostly just need to know mortal side or hedge side, because there are plants Park plants on the mortal side, and there are brambles on the hedge side. On um, the hedge side. Okay. And would you like to uh, make some sort of offering to them, some service or action or that kind of thing, to butter them up, or do you want to just spend a glamour? Can I offer a gift, like a, a bird? Sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Gray, can I have the bird back? No, I'm examining it. Come on, Gray. Gray's like elbow deep in this bird pulling out mechanical parts and guts and he's like, not right now. <laughs> Besides, the cat gets to eat it after he's done. When did I agree to that? You know, in five minutes. I still haven't forgotten about the Twinkies. <laughs> I never promised you any Twinkies. Give, uh, I guess I don't have a gift. Give Hedge some water. Do and I'm I'm not um, we're not going to do the whole if you didn't put it on your character sheet you don't have it if you would have a if you think your character would have a water bottle with you when you're going out traipsing through the hedge and stuff you're more than welcome to have a water bottle if you want to have some string or ribbon to tie on a branch that's perfectly acceptable just basically if it's a mundane item that you could theoretically have had in your pocket or something just feel free to run with it okay. we're here for funsies I'll take out a ribbon and tie it around the branch or the, the bramble. Delightful. An offering. Delightful. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so go ahead and roll me your socialize plus your weird. Socialize, socialize, socialize. Socialize will be on the front page, mm -hmm. right hand side, by the way. Okay. And your weird is at the top of your second page. So that would be it's two. just one. Two total. So I got one, ten, and then I guess I'll roll that one again. Just one. One okay, success. Fantastic. Um, so this is gonna last for about five minutes. And you can basically now ask the the brambles about anything you want to. Um, you know from using this before that it's uh, they'll only be able to remember back about a day unless you're like really get good with them. Um, but you know, they should be able to remember stuff that happened within the day or so. So what would you like to ask them? Who released the cat? Cat ran by. Hmm. No one released, just cat ran by. Have you seen this bird before? And he points over to Gray holding the bird. Bird fly by. No one released the bird, but bird fly by. When did they come through? The bird. Just now? Mm, maybe. Mm. The time is hard. Less than a season. Less than a night. Mm. While the sun was up, after it got dark, then the sun came up, then you guys showed up. About that long. Ash looks over to his crew to see if they have questions and shares what he has learned. Mm, that doesn't give us much to go on. How long has the door been here? How long has the door been here? Door, oh, oh, oh. The door to the, the, the tame trees? Um, um, long time but no one can come through for a long time until the bird and the oh. cat uh, what direction did the bird and cat come from mm, the 
there's like a rustling a little bit further away. Uh, Lou, you would recognize it's vaguely in the same direction straight ahead as the uh, as the chimney that you saw. Okay. At that point in time, I'll share with the party that it looks like it's pointing at that chimney and I'll kind of bend and poke and, and try to get the most direct line of sight towards it. Whose house is that? Whose chimney? The maker man. Gray. Gray, what what you need? I While they're doing this, I've been examining the bird, trying to figure out what it is that's into cults with specialty and fey parts. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it definitely looks like someone took a, uh, a mundane bird, whether that mundane bird got over into the hedge or... Um, or was brought over into the hedge, you can't really tell, but it it had spent time, obviously, it's got enough fey oomph um, to it, uh, to, you know, you can see like little subtle differences between a completely mundane bird, even before you start adding on the clockwork aspects to it. Um, and uh, I've forgotten, did you have a specific question or? Does this look like someone is trying to make changelings out of animals? It looks like someone is doing something to animals. Um, making changelings out of them. I mean, they're not human sized. They're not people-y. Um, it, it, it'd be hard to tell exactly what they were. You know, if they were if they were aiming for changelings, they have fallen far, far short because every changeling that you have met has been vaguely humanoid sized and bipedal and the two things that you have seen here so far have not been however someone has definitely been tinkering tinkering with them with with some sort of fey magic that is far beyond what you've seen changelings be able to um do to this looks well beyond what a contract could do though yeah yeah you don't know of any contract that would do anything like this. In fact, the idea kind of makes you squicky because it's just not a, it's not a, it's either natural nor fey natural. <laughs> Ash, you mentioned, Ash, you mentioned something about a maker man. Mm -hmm. Ask them if that thing's been nearby. Has that thing been nearby? What thing? Which thing were you talking about, Gray? The Maker Man you mentioned. The Maker Man. I've not seen the Maker Man here in seasons. He doesn't come down this path anymore. Can they make room for us to see better? Did you move? <laughs> <laughs> One more ribbon? I offer another ribbon. The, uh, that once, as soon as you get it tied on to the the branch, that branch starts like shifting, kind of like happily, almost like it's preening, uh, and they they clear the 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 path clears what had been like a you'd have to squish through it sideways, maybe get on your hands and knees in a couple places, clears to uh, well, none of you are ogres, so you're gonna probably be able to get through there, but it's definitely a single file path at best. And like any time that you're gonna be walking that close to brambles, you're gonna have to kind of like un unstick yourself as the branches and the thorns reach out to kind of grab at your clothing and stuff. But it definitely makes a much wider space than what was before there, which was basically wide enough for the cat to get through. Marlo goes first. Yeah, Marlo is um, is um, perfectly happy to take on the great evil who is creating these these torturing these poor creatures and making them into these abominations. So, he will begin to ready. Um, what does he need to do for the bite of the wooden fang to create the uh, whip made of plant material to use for? Well, Should you could um, you could basically just take a a piece of vine here in the thorns. I mean, stereotypically, thorn vines are the thing that um, that that contract is is act, is is often activated on, um, so you could just you know break off a piece of of thorn vine uh, if you wanted to. Um, I, I will do it on this side of the gate, so I'm not killing anything that Ash is talking to. <laughs> That's very kind of you. <laughs> yes. 
Do we have contact, like a contact phone number for anyone in the Freehold? Uh, yeah, you definitely have a contact phone number for the Summer Queen because you were working with her. Oh, I like what you're thinking, Gray. I, I, will be calling, I will be calling that in now. <laughs> yeah. Lenora Summer's this office. Works. This is Grayf with the Botley of, I don't know what our name is. That's fine. Um, we have returned Gray. from the job the Summer Queen Gray. sent us. Put it on speakerphone. Gray. Like, <laughs> Tell her we're the Motley crew. And um, found a potential additional fan incursion. Oh. Well, as soon as we came out of the hedge, two different animals showing fey adaptations. I know of no contract that could possibly have done this. One was a bird that was killed by a group of a murder, a murder of crows. And the other was a small cat, which is still alive, I think. It's whistling over there. The, He's my friend. I'm naming him Rush. I, I'm sorry. The, the Our connection appears to be... A, you said the cat was whispering? Whistling. The, the, the cat. Here, just listen. Whistling. Well, please stop. Ow, 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 ow. That's very loud. Can we get um, a video of it? I mean, we got I, it right here. Uh, okay. Um, so you would like for me to let Queen Lenore know that there's a whistling cat in her freehold? There is a cat and a bird that a are... Bird. A whistling bird? Been, no. Please no. pay attention. There's a cat and a bird that started as the individuals, as normal of their species, that came out of the hedge with additional mechanical additions added on to them, and from what I was able to do dissecting the bird, had been changed by fey magic in addition to that. Well, that doesn't sound good. Let's drop the Maker That's Man. Maybe she knows the Maker Man. There's something also that our elemental, our wood-blooded elemental mentioned, that yeah. the local hedge was stating that there is a Maker Man near that as well. A what? Could you say that it's again? It's what the Maker Man. I'm, hang on just a second. Let me check some records. Um, there's the sound of uh, pen against paper. There's the sound of paper flipping, like filing. Um, oh, okay. That's very strange. Um, I have some records here uh, from a few years ago. Um, we had an individual um, named... Jeremiah Maker, um, he was he was courtless, um, but he he hasn't he hasn't been accounted for on, on any of the freehold roles for a couple of years now. Is this is that the person that you're talking about? Could very well be. I don't know. Would you recognize him if I brought his head? Well, I fairly certain that the queen would but perhaps we could fall short of um blatant oh, oh, slaughter of other his head, changelings we're bringing his head it will be attached to the rest of them while he's alive hopefully that would be preferable he was uh, according to our records he was on the the freehold census for a number of years before um before going missing we i I've got a note here. Someone assumed that he just moved, but uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, so, you would like for me to pass this information along to Queen Lenora? Yes. Okay. As Wonderful. I know of no contract, and Autumn knows of no contract that can do the things that I am seeing on these animals. Certainly, certainly. Hold for one moment, please. And there's a pause. You know, the music, uh, a very, very annoying, like, 90s battle music kind of thing going on uh, in the background. And uh, in... Uh, will be singing out loud, do you know the Maker Man? <laughs> um, I think I hear in, some Motley Crue playing. <laughs> in a, a couple of uh, couple of minutes, um, the phone picks back up. Mm, this is Lenora. Uh, I've heard uh, your report from my assistant so i'm to understand that you you have encountered 
a a bird and a cat that you believe have been modified somehow by fame magic fame magic so hobgoblins fae or rogue changeling somehow mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or perhaps one of the fair folk um okay uh and uh, wh- how did how did jeremy maker come into this our wood-blooded elemental no oh okay our blooded elemental Mm-hmm. Looked through the head, looked through the, mm-hmm. looked through the, looked through the, 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 the head into the hedge, mm-hmm. and spoke mm-hmm. to the brambles oh, there. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. And the okay. brambles are saying that there is a minor trod, or used to be a minor trod here, mm-hmm. that a maker man used to utilize. Oh, interesting. And has not for several seasons. Interesting. Well, that that would line up with my records about uh about Mr. Your maker assistant. Going- me. Your assistant mm-hmm. is the one that brought up this Jeremy Maker. I said nothing of the fact that this was that person, just that the Brambles have said there is a Maker Man. Certainly. And we have a, a Maker Man. Cyborg Fae animals. Okay. Well, um, I have you. Where are you on the mission that I actually sent you on? We had just completed it. We're on our oh. way to, to talk to you. Oh, okay. When this literally, we walked out of the hedge and the bird was there. Oh. Examining where the bird came from, the cat ran out. So is the bird and the cat what what uh, killed Algernon? The, the, the rat beast that I sent you out to discover what had killed him? No, that was some other kind of giant animal. It eh, might have been animal mechanical. So you've got three different... Meat. You had three different animals that are mechanical in some way. Out of character, it was a mechanical cat that was, yeah, yeah. okay. Tiger. Yes, yeah, uh, mechanical, 100%. yes, there was a mechanical tiger that attacked Algernon, and we dealt with it. And then after okay. we immediately connect, we're finding more of these, which is concerning. Well, it seems to me that um, in order to fulfill the, uh, the, tenants of our of our pledge um you probably need to go and investigate that and find out exactly where these things are coming from the agreement we had was that we would the agreement we had was that we would find the thing that attacked your courtier Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and see what happened to him we found Mm -hmm. that oh okay i see um so what's it sounds as if you're negotiating for a an additional bargain here is that is that what we're doing twinkies it's about the twinkies i'm fine with another favor like a boon whatever you want to double down i am allowing you to know as a leader of the freehold and that the freehold is aware there is a potential fey magic incursion Mm -hmm. going on would you be willing to go investigate that? We would. Yes. That sounds lovely. Why don't you do that then? Twinkies. I believe my cohorts want a lot of Twinkies for this, though. They're big Twinkies. Twinkies means favors. I believe Alex wants to keep the cat. He's my I... friend. Twinkies? I don't understand it either. Fair. Twinkies I... mean favors. Twinkies mean favors. I see. I see. Uh, yes, I would be willing to extend our pledge if you are able to find something useful out about this incursion. If it appears that it's over your head, please don't hesitate to um, come back and report in, and uh, I'll send out some summer courtiers about it. Uh, but if you can gather more information, that would be lovely. We are happy to gather information for you. Delightful. Thank I'm you not very, very much. Happy. You never are, Marlo. I think that was just Lou, wasn't it? I don't know. It's hard to tell on this. Uh, do you have me on speakerphone? Gray, why did you say my name? No, no, not at all. Not speakerphone. <laughs> all right. And Twinkies. And we'll, we'll, we'll call again. When we I look it. forward to hearing back from you. We shall like. clothe ourselves in glory. <laughs> Y'all are ridiculous. <laughs> okay. So now that we've played the world's strangest game of telephone, uh, how would you like to proceed? 
Marlo, you want to lead the charge? Uh, happily. How fast should I charge? Do you want to be able to keep up with me or do you want me to take care of them before you get there? Do you oh, want you to heal or do you yes with you? I think I'll let them come with me, yes. So um, Marlo's happy to lead the way, though. Blade out, whip out, ride to rock and roll, like Motley Crue. Hey, Sky. One of the little birds, the crows, uh, the one that you like dressed down before and we're like, mm, um, is kind of comes and like lands on your shoulder if you'll allow it. And is like, you're, you're gonna need help. I'm gonna like give it a scritch in the spot that I like to get scritches when I was a bird. And um, I'm gonna be like, that would be wonderful if you could help us. I'll protect you. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Okay, so Marlo's going to lead the charge. Uh, I'm going to pick up my chain and lock and bring it with. Are you going to set the cat back up on its wheels? or? Oh, I'm going to carry him. You're going to carry? Oh, you're taking the cat with you? Okay. Thank goodness someone else can carry this one away. Well, this is a stealth recon mission. I don't know if we need a teapot kettle cat. I, I'll keep him calm and get the, get the whistle stopped. If nothing else can be used as a distraction as we run away. Um, I like stash that. The bird, stash the bird behind the cell tower, kind of in an out-of-way spot if I can find one. Yeah, no problem. There's a, there's a, a little outcropping of blackberry brambles that are kind of reminiscent of the hedge, uh, which is what uh, Frankie uh, uprooted some of to make the, uh, the weapon that he used. Um, so you can just like tuck it back behind there and chances are until a scavenger comes along to to snack on it it'll probably be mostly hidden away okay so y'all are going into the gateway into the hedge yes is anybody not going into the hedge i'm, I'm going happy to go second if people don't want to go yep. Yep. i'll go last fantastic um lou you would notice as often uh, always happens uh, at once you guys have passed through um, you're starting to walk forward a little bit you glance back the the gateway has closed behind you so you can no longer see out into the um, into the park um, but you do see there's a fairly notable um, two fallen trees have like landed against each other and kind of made a, a archway that's tall enough that you literally did just walk through it um so there's a very clear marking for where the gateway is back in should you need to make a hasty retreat if need be i'm gonna go ahead and take out a pocket knife and just kind of mark it with a p for park sure cool then i'll catch up with the group fantastic okay um you are making your way through it's obvious how far um the uh ashes um agreement with the briars went uh because you go go forward a ways um it kind of angles off towards where you the chimney um is now that you're on this side of the hedge you can see uh up into the sky a little bit even though the vines um are very overgrown and um kind of form a, a canopy so you're kind of walking through like a tunnel but you can still see the sky through it and and that sort of thing and you can definitely see up ahead of you you can see the pillar of smoke going up from the um from the chimney um and you hit a certain point maybe 15 20 feet along the way um where things start getting narrower and narrower um but you can still make your way it's a little little awkward a little tight but you can manage to make your way through it and then up ahead of you you see a point where the the hedge just stops like it's just a tree line a clearing obviously somebody has spent enough time and energy in this area um, to create a hollow so it's its own like tiny little clearing in the hedge and or in the yeah clearing that's been carved out of the hedge and you know that anybody can do this and sometimes they're as small as like a little den for someone to be able to sleep in safely um the one that you guys rescued for the uh spring queen um was a full-on had like several outbuildings raised beds a small orchard uh, that kind of thing so you know it was it was basically almost a city block big um but that's that's about as big as you normally see hollows this one's it's it, it's big enough that there's a there's a 
what looks to me maybe a, a two, three room uh, stone hut there with um, thatched roof and it has a chimney. Um, there's a, a, a small shed. It looks like somebody's been doing some gardening. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a little, so you can see that without emerging out into the clearing itself, like while you're still back in the brambles. So I'll let you decide how you'd like to proceed at this point. You're just kind of at the edge of the tree line. This is a scene from a horror movie. I'm just putting that out there. This looks like a scene from a horror movie. I've seen this movie. It does not go well. That's the cat. Oh, for who? The guy in the shack? The, the guy who cut his hand off and put a chainsaw. <laughs> oh, Did someone ask it. something about the cat? Oh, I was just making a joke. Does the cat make it? Oh, okay. <laughs> the cat always <laughs> makes it. The guy who charges in first always makes it to it, I believe. I'm not sure. I'm not. Um, Says I'm, Marlo I'm, as he charges in. I think you're right, Marlo. Go for it. <laughs> Marlo will. Marlo will kind of whisper to Frankie. Frankie, I'm going to let you be my better judgment here. I'm not. I'm not really uh, keen on the stealth recon. So you let me know when the when the cutting has to happen. But we don't see anybody, right? I, there, nope. There is nobody visible. I, I'd actually like to try to see if there's any scent on the wind. Someone that I can't see. Fantastic. Uh, why don't you use? Do 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 do. Why don't you use uh, wits and investigation? And because you're using scent, you get your extra die bonus for your specialty. Um. Two successes. Two. Yes, there is. Um, there are the scents of a lot of animals. Um, there is this, a, a, a human scent, doesn't smell like they wash very often, pretty, pretty rank. Um, and uh, let's see, is, what else are you smelling for? Um, uh, the animals and people is great. I'm trying to also smell whether or not I can smell um, gunpowder, ash, charcoal, or anything else that's going on that there could. Definitely the smellings of chemicals, inorganic, fiddly things. There's a fire going. Uh, definitely lots of like acrid scents over the top of each other. Um, lubricant oil, blood. Um, is, is there a window to this cabin? Yeah, the cabin has, uh, looks like it has like two windows on each side um, that don't have glass panes. They just have open shutters. Uh, and the shutters, see if I can, the shutters are open. Let's see if I can stealth up to one of them. Uh, definitely. As you're uh, stealthing up there, Frankie, uh, go ahead and give him his raw dress. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me your stealthing? Let's do dexterity plus stealth. And I get nines again, right? My steaming. Uh, I, uh, you, Frankie? Uh, yep. If your if your seeming says you do, then I believe you. Yes. All right. I, I <laughs> says it. I'm just. I, I spend the glamour for the increase in my dice pools, but the nines again is always right. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. The nine again is. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. As you're stuffing up, Frankie, I'll tell yeah. you what it is I'm smelling, so you're aware. Doesn't help me at all. One <laughs> success. One success. Okay. You're. You are still stealthy. You managed to sneak your way up to the window. Um, you pause like at the window, like you're pretty sure nobody's heard you. There's no outcry. Um, and uh, do you want to peek in the window? Okay. Um, so the, the, the room that you're looking into is a very small. Uh, it's big enough for uh, uh, like a twin-sized cot. Um, there's a small... Uh, chest at the at the base of the cot like someone might use to store clothing or bedding or that kind of thing um there's a small table beside it with a, a what looks like an oil lamp that's not currently lit because it's daytime out um there is uh there's a, a pegboard along the wall that has some clothes and that kind of thing hanging from it, it does not appear to be anybody in this room and it's really only big enough to to hold the things like you could stand in the middle of it and touch both of the walls on this particular little room in the in the hut. Is is the other window visible, or would I have to move to it to see into another room? 
you would have to move to it to see in another oh. room. Uh, basically, it's like this room has one window, um, and okay. you can see there's a there's a door that leads out. You know, probably to the other rooms. The this does this room that you're at doesn't have an outside door, um, okay. so you can. I'm gonna, move I'm gonna try that if nobody else wants to do anything. That'll be my next thing to do. Move to the next window. I'm gonna like hold up like a zero, like nobody here, <laughs> all clear. Okay. I don't mind slinking over to the other window. Okay, fantastic. Who was that? Was that Ash? Ash. Okay, fantastic. Ash, why don't you uh, give me a dexterity plus stealth as well? Okay. Dexterity plus stealth. Is anybody else doing anything while Ash is making his roll? Can I ask the glamour points? How do you know how many you have? I have five of ten. Is that five glamour points? Yes, that is five glamour points. Ten mats. Yeah, ten, ten is your... And you currently have five. Exactly. Um, and you can refresh it in a variety of different ways. Um, you can eat goblin fruit. Um, you can witness and draw energy off of uh, mortals who are experiencing strong emotions. Um, wow, Ash, you are super stealthy. Um, yeah, you, you, you managed to ghost right past the front door. Like nobody nobody's business there's no outcry or anything you sneak around to uh one of the open windows um and this room appears to be kind of like a uh laboratory kind of like a workroom there's a um there's a big table uh with a bunch of uh equipments and experiment things are bubbling and uh there's lots of um lots of big nasty looking uh uh cutting devices and you know like hacksaws and things like that um there's nobody currently in this room um but there is a in one corner there is a bear a small bear it looks not a cub but maybe like a yearling or so um that appears to be chained by the leg into one corner and it's currently just standing up and like eating something um uh gnawing gnawing on something um that's the only person or the only thing that is uh appears to be living inside the room um but there are definitely uh makeshift cages that look like they've been fashioned out of wood um with railings and that kind of thing um and you can see that there's you know there's one that holds uh a handful of doves um there's some with closer uh spindles on the cage um that hold a a, a pair of rats um there's a, a kind of just a, a little assortment of animals um is was there anything else in particular that you wanted to look for or tell whether it was in that room any signs of the person who lived there uh there is no one in that room um there is a pile of uh what looks to be stacked dirty dishes uh on one of the tables um like someone has eaten and just stacked things up there to rot um is the fireplace in this room no there is not a fireplace in this room okay. looks like the fireplace is probably in the room that's closest to the front Okay, uh, so Sky, um, your little bird, when you guys get to this clearing, uh, does not want to go into the clearing. It's it's whispering in your ear, like, you don't want to go in there. We don't want to go in there. That's not a good place to go. You're, why, why, we should go back to the park. The park's much nicer over there. Don't you think it'd be much easier to protect you if we were at the park? Because there's no, you know, monsters or people making monsters in the, in the park. It's a very nice park. Have you been, did you see the slides? The humans seem to like the slides a lot. Um. So on the, the contracts, it says that I can communicate with whispers and empathy. So can I get a sense of what the bird is feeling? Because it sounds like super apprehensive. Yeah, it's definitely 100%. You don't even need to use the, the contract for that. You're, mm -hmm. This bird is definitely, it would be so happy if you would just turn your little self around and walk your little feathered butt right out of that hedge. Because this place just is giving it the creeps. Okay. I'm going to share that with the group who's still around my general vicinity that um, there's just really bad vibes coming from this place. 
Grace Marlo like, will suffered um, smart. <laughs> mm-hmm. Marlo's going to activate his glamour to get nine again and pools involving dexterity because he's getting more and more hopeful that some action might occur here. So fantastic, fantastic. I'm, I'm going to try not to be sarcastic right now. Just I'm gonna pay attention to the cat. Well, if I see somebody move to that window, can I see him when he by that window, like he's looking in it? Who? Or are we on different sides of the house? He's talking about me. Oh, Ash. Uh, Ash, Ash is, I assumed, uh, going to the other one, going past you and going to the other one on the same side yeah, you are. Right. Can I see him, though, like at that window or yeah. no? Is it on the other side of the... No, it's, you're, you're, you're at two windows on one side of the house. On the so. same wall. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. on the same wall. Yep. They just well, look just in gonna... different rooms. Okay. I'm going to, if he's at that window, I'm going to start crawling in this window. Fantastic. Would you like to try, try to be stealthy? Stealthily? Or, okay, okay. Yeah, stealthily. Double please. check in. Double check in. Double check in. Okay. I, mean, uh, not... I didn't hear what you said. Oh. <laughs> Gray's like. I'm going to give everybody a wave. Bye. And I'm going to jump in. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, let's see. That sounds probably like a, I'm going to say dexterity plus, plus athletics. Because that's as high as your dexterity but plus stealth. Uh, if you get, uh, oh, you get nine agains on stealth pool. So let's be, you're trying it's, to be quiet about it. Let's use dexterity plus stealth. That way you get your nine again. It's the same role anyway. So I have an athletics of one and a stealth of one. So. Right. But you get nine again on your stealth rolls. Yeah. So you'll get a higher chance of successes. Okay. I'm just trying to stack the deck in your favor. Thanks. Maybe. Um, it makes it more funny when, in, when you know, it goes yeah. all wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'll spend one of my one willpower on this too. Yeah. <laughs> that gives me what three dice? Is that mm-hmm. how it still works? Yep. For that yeah. roll, yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go for it. It's the worst that could happen. Oh my god. We're in a horror movie. Don't say that. <laughs> Followed immediately by "Oh my god." <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Well, I got two eights and two ones, so. Okay, that's fine. The ones don't cancel the eights. So you're fine. Oh, we don't you do got that two, anymore, You got two successes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Doesn't doesn't oh, doesn't do oh, that. Oh. Yes, okay. yes. Only way to get dramatic failure in the system is to roll when you have what's called a chance die, and then roll a one. Yep. Um. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. You're. You're not as quiet as you'd like to be like you want to be that you know whisper of wind going over the windowsill no nah, you, you you managed to pull, pull yourself up and over and and you kind of like you get like kind of high centered on the on the windowsill and your feet start going this way and but you're able to pull it around and and slip into the room and you pause on the on the inside of the we give everyone room. a thumbs up when i out the window no problem guys <laughs> Nobody seems to, there does not seem to be any sort of an outcry or that kind of thing. You were going into the bedroom, right? That was the one you were in? Oh, okay. Yeah, you've muted. So, um, okay. So, Ash, you are at the laboratory window. Frankie, you are inside the bedroom. Uh, Sky, you are still in the tree line. Is that right? With the bird. Uh, Marlo, you are where? It's killing Marlo watching people Marlo? into that house. <laughs> <laughs> Marlo, Marlo. Just any any loud sound and whatnot, and I will give you the go ahead. You can march through that front door. But right now, I need you to wait. Gray's got like a chain around his neck, he's, holding him back. He's like giving him a bit dog. of a stink eye, but he will. He he has he has learned from past experience that sometimes it's wise to listen to his his um his motley. So he will um remain ready to charge in. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Alex, you've still got the cat in your arms. Where are you staying in the tree line? Or are you moving into the clearing? Yeah, I'm in the tree line. Uh, I'll set the cat down and, and kind of uh, keep it next to me, okay. petting it. But I'm going to check my pistol, make sure it's loaded and ready for the bullet in the chamber. Sure. Fantastic. As long as you're sitting there with it, the cat seems pretty content to to stick there beside you, um, especially if you occasionally give it a pet or something. It's um, it's, it's Always. gone gone down to making little like almost like someone snoring whistling noises as opposed to the panic screeching that it was making before uh and what about you lou where is where is lou uh lou is at a loss um but 
what he will do is he's going to creep up next to Ash because he is curious why a bear is eating in the uh, laboratory. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So we had currently have, if we're looking at the clearing, we've got the hut in front of us. We've got no one in front of the door, uh, except for Marlowe's kind of looking like he, you know, might be ready to engage there. Um, we've got several people in the tree line. Uh, we've got on the far right hand side of the far right hand wall we've got uh frankie has just gone into the laboratory window we've got ash looking in or sorry into the bedroom window we've got ash looking in the laboratory and we've got lou moving up to to ash um just a second okay well, so far so good okay so at this point that's where you guys are what would you like to do next Um, nobody else going to do anything. I'm going to start looking over this chest. I want to see if there's any like traps on it, any kind of writing I don't understand, any kind of fairy magic that looks sure. anything wonky about this chest. Sure. Yeah, no. Um, so you are, you are inside the bedroom. You look at this chest. It's at the base of the, of the twin bed. Um, it looks like it's made out of simple wood. Um, it's got some, uh, some metal banding, but it, it's not iron or anything like that. It doesn't feel wonky. Um, it's not cold iron at least. Uh, um, and uh, you, you know, you very you check it for traps. It's, it's, you're, you're even as you're checking for traps, you're kind of like, this feels a little dumb because it's, it's kind of just cobbled together. Like you can see where the nails went in. It doesn't have any sort of a clasp to hold the lid down or anything. And if you peek the lid up, you can see that it's got some clothes in it, a spare pair of boots, um, you know, a, a, a winter cloak kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's very, very mundane. Okay. Well, I'm going to go through it, see if there's anything okay. there. Um, okay. I'm definitely going to take like a cloak or something that I can like stuff in a jacket, just some if some kind of personal item. Sure, for sure. Hang on just a minute. Let me check and see. Oh, okay. As you're going through, um, as you're going through, um, you you find a, a, a there's a, a small jar down at the bottom. It was like stuffed into the toe of a of a pair of boots, um, and you were thinking about like, oh, was these boots gonna fit me? You know, kind of thing. But um, yeah, they're they're way too small. They're very 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 small um, size. Look look to be very very small for an adult male. Um, very very large for a, a for a child. Um, but, um, and, and, uh, kind of, kind of petite shaped, um, and, uh, down the, in the toe of it, there's this jar with a, a, a screw off lid. Um, it's very, it feels very out of place in here because it's made out of plastic. Mm. Um, but when you, when you pick it up, it rattles a little bit. And uh, if you if you open the jar, um, there are uh, a, a handful of seeds in the bottom of it, maybe six or seven of them, little dried seeds of some sort. Um, I will take it, it. Okay. and take like a cloak or something. Sure, totally, um, totally. That's probably all I can do right now. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, <laughs> um, hang on just a second. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so there is the sound of movement. Frankie, you would hear it first. Um, there is, uh, the sound, it sounds like someone, um, throwing a log into a fire and starting to poke around on a fire. Uh, it appears to be sounding, the door that in the room that you're in is ajar, but not completely open. Um, and it's, it's not, you can't see anything like right out of it. The door opens onto a little, like tiny little hallway. Um, but it's, it's definitely on the left-hand side of the house. If you're on the right-hand side of the house, uh, those of you who are outside, you would notice that there's kind of a, a guttering. Um, and then the smoke cut starts coming out a little bit more, um, more heavily. I know that looks like trouble. Uh, I'd like to um, tap on the glass and then use my tongue to birds and words and wolves to get the bear's attention. Okay. Uh, so uh, I well, there's here. no there's no glass. The the windows are, if if when they close the windows just have shutters. Oh, okay. Um, but so you okay. could tap on the tap on the shutter next to it or something. The the window is standing open essentially. Perfect. And I'll, I'll lightly tap on it till it looks up at me. Uh, I will name the bear uh, Barry Potter. And I will try to get Barry Potter's attention so that this way 
I can ask whether or not the dangerous smelly human is around. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll me your wits plus your weird. That's two. Okay, fantastic. Oh wait, uh, this, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and just keep that because you got successes. I'm sorry, I was looking at the beast peen census, not tongues of bird. So it should have been weird plus animal kin, but you got two successes. We'll let you roll with it. Mm -hmm. um, the bear, the bear has got um, what looks like like maybe a, a a rib bone with a little bit of meat still on it, clenched in his hand, and he looks up when when he hears the tapping. He's like. What? Why are you here? And I go. You're not the him. maker man. I go. I know. I smelled him. Where is he? He's not here. He goes into the other room. He comes back and brings me food. Hmm. I see. Do you like food? Is that what you do? Do you just? I'm. Eat? I'm here, and I can't do much else. So. Do you want good. to? Do Do you want to leave? Well, heck yeah. But he like lifts up his leg, which is chained to the to the into the like big strong chain, big manacle around his uh, foot, and it's bolted like right into the stone of the of the outer wall of the hut. And, and I'll look over my shoulder uh, and kind of look back at the rest of the group. I'll speak just a little bit louder so a few of them can hear me and go. If we help free you, Fairy Potter, will you help us either subdue the Maker Man? or protect us as the Maker Man attacks, and we all leave together. Sure. And then I'll duck back down. And I will share this very information. Very Potter is very confused by this mysteriously <laughs> appearing person. <laughs> but hey, what the heck? It's better than being chained to the wall. Uh, I will let the group know that the bear that has been chained to the wall in this room uh, will ideally not harm us unless we harm it or surprise and scare it. And we can actually use it to our advantage if we need to. And then I will uh, try to usher Ash along to the other side of the house to see if we can find anything else uh, around the room, back doors or anything else. Okay. And I could um, use going touch, I believe, to free the bear probably to undo the chains. So oh, what was the what was this the thing called then? Uh, knowing, uh, knowing touch. touch. Yeah. Talk to an object to learn its its thing. Yeah. Would you like to? Would you like to? Let's see. Understand the item of these. Uh, know how to most effectively disable or break it. Yes. Yes. You could definitely do that. Although it it's a very simple mechanism. It's a so manacle and a chain and a and a thing. It's it's not complex. So if I can roll to do it without that, I'll do. But I'll let Lou and Ash give me the go ahead for it before I go charging in and start freeing the bear. That's fair. Uh, let's see. Finally, finally, the Maker Man realizes that there's something going on. Uh, so, uh, the, so you hear, uh, let's see, Frankie, you are in the bedroom still, right? Um, Lou and Ash, you are outside of the laboratory. Um, and there is, there is, Frankie, you hear it first, there is the sounds of someone walking, um, headed your direction. Uh, up you're assuming up the hallway because there's just not a very much space this is like three or four rooms and a hall so um but it's definitely coming your direction how would you like to respond um i'm gonna try and get back out the window quickly and stealthily okay fantastic Make roll. oh those two things don't go together in a sentence <laughs> <laughs> but, but but it could be so amusing well, I'm not going to spend a willpower because the gig's up one way or another. So, <laughs> whatever. Uh, no successes. Okay. Um, so, you have two choices. You can either, um, I'm going to give you the choice. You can either dive out the window, but have made some noise on your way out, or you could attempt to like hide next to the pegs and you know, use the clothing as a, as a, so you either can have escaped the room or remain hidden. Well, let me ask you a question. So yeah. like, just because I hear him coming my way, mm -hmm. does it mean that I think, or it, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Do I think that he, that they definitely 
are coming for me or could they have heard something else they don't you haven't heard any sort of in fact in fact as they're walking they're kind of like okay breaks over back to work oh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> all right yeah uh, it doesn't sound like they're not like hey what was that noise in there no i'm gonna Do dive i'm gonna go for mm, no i'm not gonna hide i'm gonna go for speed i'm just gonna okay. dive out, out the window, window then. okay so yeah. you're you're just like oh fuck this i'm out time to uh, go <laughs> gotta go guys but as you're as you're going uh your foot just catches the edge of the lamp that's near the the table going out the door and it falls you can hear it as you're out, already outside the door you can hear it fall over onto the the floor and the glass breaks we're all good guys <laughs> so Mar marlo says breaks over time to get back to work <laughs> and he goes and stands over frankie just in case someone comes charging up behind him okay um so there is a there is now there is a startled sound from inside uh and uh a a male voice um says sounds like older um little little crickly in the in the tone um it's like what the what the, what the hell was that uh and the bedroom door is pushed open uh Who's the closest person to me? Uh, uh, that would either be Lou or Gray or Sky at this point, I believe, because I'm I'm envisioning Marlo's kind of like standing at the ready, not not directly in front of the door, but kind of like prepped to breach the door if he has to. Frankie and Ash and uh, Lou are on the right hand side of the building outside, so that leaves you, Gray, and Sky kind of in the in the tree line of the clearing with the bird and the cat and okay i'm going to turn to sky say pet the cat and i'm going to walk to the front door and knock and then there's absolutely and i just start petting the cat glad to be a thing <laughs> that i can do well <laughs> bird on one shoulder sky's like the little snow white of the village <laughs> okay um so alex walks up to draconic walks up to the front door and raps on the door i assume you're doing it loud enough to to uh, draw the attention your direction it, it works um there's it, it takes some you know 45 seconds or so there's definitely the sounds of someone walking through the the uh the hut while kind of muttering to themselves about what the what the, what the hell is going on what's this what what somebody at the door people don't come to the door what is the at the door um begin preparing medical supplies like if the intention we're probably going to need them in a minute okay um and uh he the the person inside the house gets to the door and they're like hello do they open the door? Mm -mm, not yet. I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to stand there straight, waiting okay. for the door to open. Okay. They they wait a, a minute or two to call out hello hello, is there something? and then finally you know that you you see the the doorknob turn and the door slowly like you know does that kind of i'm taking a cautious peek out um the person that's inside the room is maybe four and a half feet tall maybe maybe four and three quarters on a really really good day um they're very 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 skin skinny um you you you're pretty sure that they're a wizened um they just have that kind of look to them they've got a, a shock of gray hair that's kind of just going every which direction they look like they haven't shaved in months um the food stains up and down their shirt um they've got uh, they're they're dressed in very rustic like peasanty kind of clothing um with a leather like workman's apron uh tied around their waist um it's one of the ones with the full bib and everything and around the around the waist itself is a big uh tool belt and you would notice that there is a very very big bronze hammer um through the the two belt it looks too big to use honestly but it's it's it and it, it looks like it should be pulling this wizened over um so can i do, do i know you so i'm going to activate uh, my mask of superiority okay 
yay fairest. And just, there we go. And mask of superiority, fantastico. Uh, so gain a bonus when speaking from a position of authority. Target believes Changeling is someone important, can't control who they think, who they see him as, adds one bonus die for each success to all social roles to impress, intimidate, or command the target. Last one scene, fantastic. Go ahead and roll me a weird plus intimidation and I will roll their resolve. They do not have a very high resolve. You totally, yeah, fantastic. Um, and they're like, they're like, oh no, oh, oh, are you, tell the, tell the queen, tell the queen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just working, I'm, I'm just working, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't have things done yet, just, just working. Just working. No need to. No need to. to, to you could just go. Oh, you're you're uh, muted. Like if you were talking, you're muted. I'm here to check on your progress. No, no. A uh, progress is being made. Let me assure you, in a most expedited manner. Um, nothing to see here. Um, tell the queen I'll get a report into her. Um, at least by the end week, the end of the month, the end of the month, yeah, definitely uh, end of the month. No, no later than December, I promise. And tries to shut Stick the door face. in your face. <laughs> Stick my foot in the door. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry about that. Didn't mean to get your toes there. Um, I, I just, I got to get back to work. You know how it is. Every, I got to, got to get things done. She wants an update. Uh, did, did you say she? You said the queen, so I... Oh, okay, yes. good. Um, uh, uh, update, no, nothing to report yet. Not all, mm, all experiments are going as expected. No new news. Um, uh, I'll, 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 I'll promise I'll report in as soon as something is ready to report. He tries to shut the door, but obviously your foot's still there. Very I'm just gonna boots. stare him down. Very tough boots. Um, uh, I'm not sure what you want. I, I, I should get back to work. Then show Please. me the work. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I suppose that's acceptable. And he looks down at the the hammer, and he's like quiet for a second. He's like, oh, and then, and then I'll get back to. I will. I'll get back to it. Stop it. Okay. Okay. Just a quick peek, quick update, and then I gotta get back to work. I really, really have to, okay? Very well. Okay, okay, back here, back here, back here, back here. Uh, and he leads you through, the the, the left-hand side of the building is a um, is it like a living area. There's a, like the fireplace with the cooking utensils and little table and bench set up and a uh, bookshelf with all kinds of uh, books and components and bits and bobs on it. And he leads you right past that. Now, if you just come back, mm -hmm. now, go ahead. Before I enter the building, mm -hmm. From behind my back, I'll surreptitiously gesture to my motley to mm -hmm. kind of like, come on. <laughs> Flat Marlo on the shoulder. <laughs> Marlo will attempt to slide in uh, looking guard-like, supportive-like, without um, stabbing or poking anything right away. Oh, oh, oh okay. Um, so there's two of you. Okay, okay, that's fine. We'll just make a quick, quick. Uh, examination of my experiments. I'll explain, and then you can just get right out of here, and I'll get right back to work. Uh, yes, rest of you. Okay, okay. Um, be careful. Uh, as you're coming back, um, there is a small like closet, but it doesn't have a closet door. Um, that is stacked uh with cages similar to the ones that uh, Ash and um Lou saw in the laboratory. Um. There's all kinds of animals, uh, lizards and toads and things like that, um, all just kind of in, in various stages. They don't look super well cared for, but they're not obviously neglected. They all have food. They all have water. Um, but they some of them look like they've been in that cage for a whole long time. They're very resi resigned to it, um, not agitated or anything, just kind of broken spirit. 
Um, and he leads you right past him. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, those are future, future test subjects. We've got a good supply, got a good supply. It got harder, better than myself. Um, okay, so we're gonna come back here. Now you don't touch anything. It's important not to touch anything. Um, okay, so- uh, here, What? Just put my hands behind my back. Okay, um, so here we go. This is where the magic happens. Um, as you can see, uh, this is where, and there's a, uh, he leads you over to the workbench, which is low, considerably low for you uh, because it's made for his height. Um, and there is what appears to be a crab claw made out of uh, gears and and wiring and things like that. Um, you think there's even like some some land cable and stuff working things together. So it's not, it doesn't have the elegance of like steampunk stuff. It's really just kind of cobbled together bits and bobs. So this is the most uh, recent one I've been working on. I'm having a little trouble uh, getting the circuits to be um, uh, waterproof, which is necessary for the, Sub, uh, sub, uh, water animal, uh, hybrid. It's just, it's really important that I get it watertight and it's not quite there yet. So we're not moving forward with this experimentation until we perfect it. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is the most updated, um, one. And, uh, and now you can go and uh, I can get back to work. That would be lovely. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate your presence here as always. Thank you for your cooperation. You're welcome. You didn't have much choice. You really didn't. I know. Okay, now you go and I'll get back to work. I'm got catch. Um, I will get it. I, I'm getting it. I am. I have to do this. I think it's fine. Everything's fine. So you seem troubled. No, no. I just have a very high work ethic. Um, I really need to get back to work now. So well, if you could just bother you, we'll just observe for a bit. Um. Oh. What? Uh. Uh. This is very delicate experimentation. Uh. I can't, I can't, can't guarantee your safety should you choose to remain. I can guarantee our safety. Oh, we talks. Okay. Um, okay. So, okay, okay, I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, okay, so I'm going to, um, now I'm going to try to, uh, chest this in a water setting to see uh be careful the last couple of times i've done this it's exploded so you may want to step back a little bit uh okay. and he's got he's got like a cauldron of of water and he takes the uh the claw and uh uh dips it in and it's sure enough as soon as it touches the water it starts sparking and he like jumps backward and he's like oh Oh, no, 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 uh, no, 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 stop it, stop it, um, so, uh, yeah, so that didn't work really well, so back to the drawing board, I guess you guys can go now, uh, nothing to see here, I'm working on it, um, Hello, observe anything about what happened with the mechanism, uh, with his, um, uh, knowledge of, of machinery, is there anything he can tell? From what went wrong, or does he observe anything at all? Uh, it's 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 pretty much what you would expect to to have happen when uh, something electronic hits something watery. Um, uh, but there is very definitely uh, you have uh, look at things, tell what they do things, right? Um, could you could you roll me a perception check? So with plus composure, uh, Alex, if you'd like to do it too, that'd be great. Perception would be. Uh, it's composure. wits plus composure. Wits plus composure, okay. Um, just as a quick out of game note, we are oh, five minutes over our mark. Does anybody have to go right now? I think we can wrap this up in maybe another five or 10 minutes, but I just wanted to make sure that that's okay for you guys. Okay. Um, are any of the rest of you going to come into the room too? Yeah, I want to get into the window, go through the window again. and. Oh, sure. Actually, yeah. if they went into the door, I'll just try and be quick. 
stealthy behind them, give him a little he, leash yeah, on him and just. He didn't, assuming that uh, that uh, Alex left the the door unlocked behind him. Uh, there, yeah, and and uh, Jeremiah definitely doesn't have any. Um, yeah, he's got the two people that he's seen and that he's concerned about. But the the main thing uh, that his his main concern is he's he's worried about Alex and and Marlo's presence here. But he's really really concerned about and talking to the the um, hammer at his at his belt. Um, okay, so uh, one success. Oh, one success, fantastic, and that was do okay, fantastic. So um, you would notice i mean not only is it just kind of weird that this guy is talking to the hammer at his belt but this thing is obviously not mundane um it is it it is not designed for hammering things although it obviously looks like a hammer it's more like an art piece of a hammer um but he's definitely carrying on a two-way conversation with it and that's weird as hell um if you would like to, at this point, you could either activate knowing touch or attempt to touch it and activate instant expertise to get more information about this thing that he is talking to. Or if you would like to, you could do either one of those uh, on the crab claw, although it appears to have kind of gone gunny bag. I am, uh, Marlo is sorely tempted to Marlo's going to do knowing touch on the hammer. Okay, fantastic. Um, that allows you to, strangely enough, knowing touch is not the one that requires you to touch it. So you can do it from just anywhere in the room without oh, any perfect. problem. Um, so you're going to use your weirds plus your crafts. Right. Uh, the device's owner has not asked you, to, asked you to do this, so you will need to spend a glamour point. And uh, craft is under, there we go. That should be under mental skills, yeah. Ah, uh, no successes. No successes. Okay. Yeah, this so weird hammer. Who that's that's just a weird no idea why that guy's talking to that weird hammer. Pretty strange. Um so he's like, um, so you could go now. We could. We won't. Okay. That's an interesting hammer you got there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's uh inspirational. It's inspirational. I I have just found since I found this hammer, I have just found that I my work has just just blossomed. I mean, it's it's just amazing. It's it's amazing. I feel like it speaks to me. I just feel like I could build anything, and and um yeah, I've just been so productive. It's just it's uh it's it's been. I just feel like I just could work forever. It's it's amazing. But don't take it. It's fine. Okay, it's mine. So where'd you find it? Where can uh, I like it? Uh, it was, it was, um, I, 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 it was in the hedge. Uh, I was going out, uh, the, it was, um, it was after, uh, Queen Matilda's coronation, uh, when she became the summer queen. Uh, out of game, you guys would recognize wrong name for the queen. Uh, and so Queen Matilda's uh, coronation. Uh, after that, uh, I was on my way back home, and I got a little lost, and uh, it was just laying there. And um, so I thought it was pretty, and uh, it, it was, uh, yeah, and it, I've just been working ever since then, and it's just been so useful. I just feel like I've, I've been able to create so much more than I ever did beforehand, and um, I keep intending to get, and I'm so sorry that I haven't been able to report into Queen Matilda, um, but... Um, but uh, it just, it's, I just, I'm constantly inspired. And um, it's, I keep intending to report in and uh, write, but every time I sit down to write a missive, I just, I think, well, I could just do one more experiment and uh, then I have more to report into her. Um, but please don't take it. Matilda, Queen Matilda does feel that you've fallen behind. Oh no. And there must be some recompense. Oh no. 
so I was very worried about that. Um, I'm sorry, but I just, I, I mean, if I could just have a little bit more time, I'm sure I could perfect this. You should see what I've been doing. It's amazing. It's it's the possibility of being able to create an entire entire army that could that could protect us from the keepers just by blending mm. the the um the, the 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 technology and 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 the, the brave creatures. We we it would be amazing, and we, then we wouldn't have to fight them. We'd be so much more protected from the from the keepers. I'm I'm gonna kind of move out of the shadows and get next to Marlo. Oh, another yeah. one of you. Oh, I'd be like. I think we're gonna take that hammer, man. No, no, you can't <laughs> take the hammer. No, 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 no. I'm so sorry. That just won't work. I, that Queen Matilda would be very, very upset if it in, interrupted my uh, st- my uh, experiments. Uh, and she, he looks at Alex like, please, Alex, you can't take my hammer, please. Queen Matilda would be I so s- upset. I said there would need to be recompense. Well, yes, yes, you can. Um, you can have. Uh, he starts handing you things off his thing. Uh, this, uh-huh. this. Is l- no, 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 you can't. I can't. You can't. I can't. No, I'm not going to give you to them. No, stop. stop. It's, it's... I can't. No, no, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Nothing to see here. Is there a dynamic for um uh, uh non-lethal or like wrangling damage, grappling or something? Like a grappling? Sure. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Yeah, we totally can do that. We're just going to do a, uh, so um in order to do the first grapple, let's try a uh, dexterity plus brawl. And then okay. in order to continue subduing them, let's go ahead and do strength plus brawl. Okay. I'm going to have to roll from the die on the phone. So the, um, the, um. Brawl, I have three, but it says team in parentheses. Does that signify? That is, uh, so that would be a specialty if you're fighting with a team. Okay. So if, say, Frankie and Alex I'm going to help do the same thing. It. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> dog yeah. pile on the wizard. Dog pile on <laughs> yeah. the wizard. Yeah. Okay, okay. fantastic. Uh, we'll so make, I'm going to make sure it hurts a little bit, though, too. <laughs> of course you <laughs> are. I can use my specialty in dirty fighting. I'll make sure I put like an elbow on this guy's Sounds face good. somewhere. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make me uh, go okay. ahead and make me the roll. Let me get my I don't have enough dice dice, so I'll have to use an app here. Jackson Brawl. Yep. Wait a second. Ugh. Four. <laughs> yeah. Eight. He's he's wizened. He has Okay, I had two successes. I can't even get a I can't even get a dodge roll going. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like it's like it's like taking like grabbing him and holding on to him is like grabbing and holding on to a kindergartner. I mean, it's just really uh, no real defense whatsoever. However, the minute you start touching the uh, the hammer or, or reaching towards the hammer, he starts freaking out. He's like a cat in a bag. Um. Do you I think that is a cue for the rest of us? <laughs> that sounds like, <laughs> yeah. And you guys, uh, uh, Sky and Gray and uh, Lou, were you still outside? Okay. Um, and those of you who are outside, you hear like the voice has gone uh, up in volume drastically. Like this is a desperate person. I'm going to try and intimidate him into okay. uh, into stopping moving. Okay. Like, like raising my voice with confidence and, and just. Silence! And he freezes long enough that one of you guys can grab the hammer. Uh, Marlo um, snatch it if no one else does. Okay. Marlo's gonna grab it. Um, Marlo, you, the minute you touch this hammer, you a voice sounds in your head. And it's very, um, it, it sounds like it's made out of, like, um, the clicking of typewriter keys. Um, and you very definitely get the message that it is, it's like, okay, what are we going to make now? I have some ideas. Um, would you please give me a, a uh, wits, uh, let's see, uh, resolve mm-hmm. plus, um, let's see, what would be a good thing for you to do this? Uh, Let's do. Why don't you give me um, resolve and composure? We don't normally do resolve two attributes, and... but okay. That's fine. Cannot roll tonight. 
I have. You don't mind. <laughs> one success. That's more than I got. Okay. Um, so you um, you are, do not fall under this thing's spell immediately, um, but it is definitely talking at you, and just it's like there's there's nothing else in the world that it wants to do except get you to build things. Marlo is so totally overbuilding things. Um, <laughs> right? Exactly the wrong person to try to do this to. He will convey he will convey uh, what this hammer seems to be doing, and ask those who may be. Uh, Ask what they would. Should we take this back to the Summer Queen? Do we? Can we wrap it in this chain and drag it so no one has to touch it? That or my bag. Yeah, we could put it in a book bag. Um, you know, I could empty mine out. The Whatever. minute that this thing is out of Jeremiah's hands, he collapses to the, the laboratory floor, sobbing, absolutely inconsolable sobbing. And it is partially. Um, He's, he's saying things alternate. There's like two streams of thought. One of them is, want that back. I need my hammer. I have to have my hammer. The other one is, oh, God, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Hmm. So you have to put him in a bag, too. Put him in a, <laughs> in a bag. He would really fit in a bag at this point. Um, so you have successfully uh, uh, taken the hammer away. You have successfully incapacitated this uh, this poor wizard, um, and uh, the rest of the group uh, can can be into the the space now. Um, I'd like to free Barry Potter before we wrap up. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yes, you go. There is a there is a uh, a, a big metal chain of keys. Uh, that appears to be the the keys to all of the little, uh, all, any of the the cages that have locks appear to have keys there. Many of the cages uh, for for things that you know bunnies and that kind of thing that wouldn't be able to get out um, are are just you know you can lift the the thing. I would recommend we not release a bunch of these animals into the hedge. If we're going to be releasing them, we'll need to release them in the actual world. Mm -hmm. And Barry Potter is kind of a problem unless you want to just let a random bear yearling out awesome. to the park. Um, well, Barry Potter, one will come with me until we can take you somewhere safe. I'd like to go home. Let's find out where your home is. It's over, not too oh, far. Alex from is the keeping the cat. Market. What? Alex is keeping, Alex the, is cat? keeping the cat. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's keeping that cat. <laughs> So Barry describes his home in such a way that you get the feeling that he actually lives within the hedge. Um, he's also capable of speaking English speak, to, uh, you know, words, actual spoken words, um, even after Lou's uh, contract wears off. Um, he's, he's obviously some sort of a, a, a hedge beast, a, a hobgoblin bear. Um, because we're about 15 minutes over now, um, you guys managed to get the hammer back, the uh, wizened back, the, um, the, the folks who are in charge of helping mentally broken changelings uh, accept responsibility for Jeremiah and um, kind of working him through what's happened to him. Um, the queen will, uh, will uh, offer you all another major boon in exchange for returning the hammer to the freehold uh, so that it can be protected if that is acceptable to all of you or you can refuse the favor and keep the hammer i'd like to make sure it ends up in autumn as opposed to specifically the freehold mm, very nice that's a ne negotiable point definitely definitely she she accedes to that and calls one of the ministers of uh can't remember uh she calls one of the uh Ministry of Scarecrows uh, to come and claim it while you're still present there so that she can prove that it has been handed over into Autumn's hands. And uh, you, Alex, you have this wonderful little cat. Um, you at, at some point when like a neighbor or something sees it, they think it's adorable that, you know, your poor little paraplegic cat, you built this little wheelchair thing for it. And they, they just think that's so nice. He really needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's amazing what they can do with technology these days. Um, so anyway, you guys did a great job. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you this so a, much. A lot of fun. Very cool system, Jess. I've never played this before. Very neat. Thank you. 
great. Yay. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions in the future, um, I know I am always one of those people that the minute the meeting closes, I'm like, oh, but what about this? Please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm Jess at JessHartley.com is my email. I'm Jess Hartley pretty much everywhere that you can find people on the internet, except for Tumblr. My daughter says I don't get to go there. So um, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about Changeling or about GMing, um, if there's anything I can do for you. And until that point, thank you guys very much. This has been a wonderful evening for me. I really appreciate you guys, uh, uh, your commitment to your characters. <laughs>